Hi, my name's Luke from Rackage Machinery. I'm going to be talking about the ONK Excavator Track Tensioning System. So this applies to the ONK Terex, Bucyrus, RH Series Excavators and your Caterpillar 60 Series Excavators. Pretty sure they're still using it with the latest models that are coming out now. So this is a system on the track tensioning which releases your stored energy in the track tensioning cylinders when it gets too high or when it exceeds the, the system pressure. Um, the valve, I'll be focusing a lot on this valve and how it works and how to set that 70 bar basically. So the, this is going to be handy information to know when you're troubleshooting any issues with the track tensioning. It's normally a very reliable valve. I've never had to reset the pressure on it uh, to solve any uh, track tensioning faults with it. But it is handy to know so it's something you can eliminate when you're troubleshooting any track tension faults if you know how to check it easily. So before we rip into it, the schematic I've got here on the right, the OEM schematic, that's it there and I've just redrawn it to this on the left. Um, basically what I've done is just change the pilot operated check valves here to a two position valve and just so it's a bit more visually intuitive so you can see how it functions and that'll help me animate it through the presentation here. So here's the track tensioning system from from the car body out to your track tensioning cylinders. So this body here is the valve, your switching valve and your pilot operated check valves, that's the whole body there. Obviously these are your pilot operated check valves here as discussed previously and your 70 bar switching valve is uh, there. On the right here, you've got your tensioning cylinders, your accumulators, your shut-off ball valves, and then your 330 bar shock relief valves, or the taps, which you open up to release that pressure when uh, during maintenance. So in this system, we've shown it as it's basically your machine idling, no excess track tension here, um, 60 bar coming in through this purple gallery here. Uh, it's not enough to overcome the 70 bar setting on that spring, so just moves right on by through your check valves. Uh, if this pressure here is lower than the 60 bar coming in, this will then open and allow 60 bar to go out to your tensioning cylinders. Uh, the, when the pressure is above 60, it will come back here and this will hold it in the closed position just like a check valve. Something to note here is the gallery here on your switching valve. So this is a, a separate gallery, so there's a store test fitting there on the top of the block. Um, and this, all this green here is what opens your, this is the pilot signal that opens your pilot operated check valve. So that's shown there as inactive, obviously. So to the next slide here, we'll go in the active position. So this is 80 bar now entering your track tension system from upstairs through your rotary connection. It enters the pilot operated check valve block here. Now it overcomes that spring setting there, holds the valve in the open position. That 80 bar will then go through this gallery, unseat your pilot operated check valves regardless of what the pressure is in these uh, in your tensioning cylinders and basically open that up and let them drain back to 80 bar so that will that will fall back to that 80 bar that's being set in sent in now for testing and adjusting you'll need 200 bar gauges and enough test line to get you from the pilot operated check valve block down below just select my pointer here uh, so that orange port, the left hand one, which is basically just above your 70 bar switching valve. You need to run a test line from that up past your rotary connection and into the cascade room or cab riser for gauge one. We'll talk about that later. Gauge two will have to go to your 60 80 bar test point and that run that line and gauge into your cascade room as well. So to test that circuit, first you need to ensure that your 60 and 80 bar pressures are right as per the tune-up procedure or the OEM manual. Have your boarding ladder down and your engines at high idle. Disconnect the DIN plug to the Y14 solenoid. And in that state, gauge one should be reading a tank pressure. So I had that as 11 bar last time I did this. Um, just from restriction, back through the rotary connection, past all your other pumps that are casing. That'll be all that restriction there, that 11 bar you're seeing. So yeah, that's fine. Um, then when you plug that Y14 back in, this should then switch up to 80 bar. It should actually match what's on gauge two. That's the signal that's going down to unseat your pilot operated check valves. Or it should be close to anyway. Um, I mean, a difference of up to 10 bars tolerable. What you're looking for is this pressure on gauge one to switch from high to low when you unplug and plug in that Y14 solenoid. If you need to 
tune that for any reason or if you if you want to drill down a bit deeper and find out what that actual pressure is here's the adjusting procedure so have your ladder down so your Y14 is energized have that plugged in adjust your 80 bar release down to about 60 to 65 bar so just back that down so gauge 2 reads 60 to 65 and then as you wind it back up you should watch watch both of these gauges if you can you might need an extra set of hands for that wind them up and the point that gauge 2 is at when gauge 1 switches is what the setting is down below so ideally you want the needle to hit 70 bar as you as you're increasing your adjustment on the 80 bar release there and then at that point then the gauge one should switch from tank pressure up to 70 bar or, 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 or thereabouts. If it's too low go down to the 70 bar switching valve and winding it in clockwise will increase the pressure just like a normal release valve for that one. If it's too high turn it, turn it counterclockwise so basically you can't really do it live like you would a release valve you have to basically turn it a little bit test it again uh, from what I can tell. So here's the schematic of that test happening in practice. Basically, just just so I'll I'll flick back and forward between the two states of of uh, active and inactive, just so you can wrap your head around the schematic here. But so at this state, like before, your 60 bars are coming in through this purple gallery here. It's not enough to overcome your 70 bar switching pressure. It's blocked there. Goes through your track tension check valve. If it op if it needs to open it, it will. If it doesn't, it won't. Um, and you have at the least you'll have 60 bar tension in your track tension cylinders so now it's active again so your 80 bar is now coming in through this purple gallery it then overcomes your switching valve uh, spring tension setting and it will just shuttle straight over it will then direct that into this gallery which is where your gauge one is basically tapped into so that's why you see it switching and then it will open that open those polar operated check valves so no matter what the pressures are in this it this will overcome that check valve and open them and drain them back to back to that 80 bar what you see there i'll just toggle back and forth for that so you can watch that happening in motion again so that's inactive for your switching valve or your that's 60 bar track tension pressure and then your 80 bar and that's it any questions uh drop it in the comments and i'll see where if i can help anywhere uh if you if there's any other videos you'd like to see um also drop that in the comments and i can see what i can do with um that i've got a few other ones coming so stay tuned